Hey guys, welcome to Dolly & Associates. Today we are here at the Healthy Kimberly Food Recovery Depot to spotlight a community resource that really gives back and helps in our community. We're gonna jump in, learn a little bit and help out. Let's go. And we're here joined by Shannon Duncan of Healthy Kimberly Food Recovery Depot here in Kimberly, British Columbia. Shannon, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for coming. Yeah, the uh, I want to highlight the impact of this community resource here in Kimberly, but also the significance of it in any community. So can we start by just asking what it is that the Food Depot does? So we recover food fit to eat but not fit for sale from mostly local grocery retailers but also farms, gardens, households sometimes and we work to with what we have to make something useful for our community. Wonderful and how does the operation logistically work day to day? So we have pickups from grocery stores five days a week. We go to the grocery store, they fill our clean bins and we bring it up here, we weigh it in, we weigh everything in and out to record our impact and also just to know what we're doing. Um, we, we weigh it in, we sort it using really strict food safety guidelines. Everything that is not edible for humans goes to farms and we have pickups every day. What is edible, we store in our fridges and freezers and we have agencies come and get food every day for vulnerable community members that are their clients. And then we also funnel food into our meal program and we produce meals for those agencies as well. It's like a, the, a perfect full circle community piece. Um, taking and giving and just making sure that, that all corners are taken care of. How does the volunteer operations work? So we have uh, an average of over 300 volunteer hours a month right now to wow. keep things going. So our volunteers truly are our heart and soul. We yeah. couldn't do anything without them. And we have an amazing volunteer base. Really great, motivated, colorful and diligent people involved. Uh, so we send out a schedule for them at the beginning of every month and they sign up for shifts that work for them. And in our monthly email, it includes updates and highlights and any sort of special things to note or opportunities for um, training or events that they can take part in, like our volunteer advisory or um, special projects. <laughs> yeah. So once a month we send out the schedule, they sign up for what works and Usually we have enough people to make it all happen. <laughs> I, can't, I can't imagine how intensely enriching it must be for your entire crew to participate, to just come in and, and be hands-on with improving the quality of life for others in their community, their neighbors and, and those just all around. Um, yeah, I, I, I have no real words to describe how awesome that's gotta be for your volunteers. Well, it's really tangible. Like I think it's um, a knock on wood, we, we haven't, had too many problems with volunteer recruitment because it does seem to really speak to people for a variety of reasons. Well, no, but I agree. I've been here for only a short while and my wheels are turning of how can I come in and help on the, on the other side of my life, right? Yeah, yeah, that's great. I like we, we do try to be a super nice and like fun and welcoming place to yeah. be so that people want to be here. And I think some of our volunteers are really motivated by the waste reduction piece because we are diverting food from the landfill that is perfectly edible and really useful. So let's talk about that, mm -hmm. um, the prevention part. How does the recycling um, operations work with your crew? So our food, in, in the way that our food is transported and uh, sold these days, there's a lot of packaging. Yeah. It's very obvious when you're grocery shopping, almost everything has some form of plastic on it. But you strive really strongly to, to take care of that on the back end. Yeah, well we, yeah, nothing, like all, literally nothing except 
paper towels uh, goes in the garbage here. It's very, very small. No food goes in the garbage at all. Everything goes for some use in farms if it's not edible for humans. Uh, and the packaging is all properly rinsed and goes to either our regular bin recycling or taken out to the transfer station, like the flexible packaging. And it's all done, it's all reused somehow, um, or recycled somehow, I should say, but then we also reuse whatever we can too. So the packages that, you know, there's, there's lots of good uses for those plastic containers that we can properly wash and sanitize and then reuse for packaging food. Garden season's coming and we also like, sometimes our volunteers are fighting over the like, things that they can use as cloches as they're starting plants in the garden. Yeah. Or like we have a very resourceful crew. We attract a very resourceful crew because people are motivated to use less and, and waste less. And so we have, we, we just try to use everything as much as we can and then recycle it when it when it needs to be. But yeah, it's definitely not going in the garbage. Excellent. And the composting, that stays local as well? Yeah, we have local farms that pick up every day that we have food sorting. Awesome. Yeah. So one thing that I was eager to do was to, to get my hands dirty and put on an apron and help out a bit. So could we jump into that and you could maybe share with me how you guys do things around here? Absolutely. Awesome. So here we are with a great example of what might come in on any given day in a bin. Yeah, so this is a produce bin. Often the grocery store will kind of keep things to category, which is great. Um, you can see the variety of packaging. Some of this is super useful for us to reuse in our sorting, or volunteers will wash and sanitize it and take it home for their own use. Like you can bake in this, so great. Um, we always have a Sharpie with us so we have sharpie. pockets in all our aprons here and this is part of our agreement with the store we strike out every barcode so whether it's staying in our fridge for human use or it's going to farms we always have to barcode it so these beans they're uh, I think we're just going to give them a little bit of a rinse. This is the one thing I know for sure that we're going to be composting. You can just tell visually. The there, yeah, it's deteriorating. What we uh, tell our guy, our volunteers, as a, an overarching guideline, is if I would eat it, we keep it. If I wouldn't, it goes to the farms. It yeah, doesn't feel slimy right, a little right? bit. Slimy, slimy, slimy. They're not smelling slimy. like fish yet, but personally, I wouldn't eat those. They're kind of right in the mushrooms today, so I think we're just gonna. So jumping over to who's receiving, uh, for, the, for the depot here, who, who do you find coming in most? It, is it a variety of families or people that are struggling? How does that look? Yeah, it's a, it's a wide range. We do have over 20 agencies accessing food every week for clients that are vulnerable in some way. So that's a lot, mostly low income. They're not always agencies that are uh, their primary goal is food security, but they're addressing food security needs for their clients. So they could be working in mental health, but their clients are struggling with food security so they can access food and meals here for free and that way support and check in on other aspects that they're actually intended to be helping their clients. Um, the food bank is our probably our largest recipient, well definitely our largest recipient. So we have a lot of our meals and tons of fresh food that goes to the food bank and we work really closely with them. Yeah. Uh, local schools, school programs, so a lot of kids, a lot of families through the Early Learning Centre and pregnancy outreach um, and seniors as well is a big one. We have a lot of senior support and our meals especially have been really useful for seniors living alone or less motivated, um, losing a partner. 
less, maybe a little bit less capable in the kitchen. Yeah. Um, motivation's a really big one for that age group. I've, I've heard from our agencies that are serving that clientele because especially when they lose a partner or just have less Definitely. people around them, the motivation to prepare food for yourself just kind of declines and being able to access our healthy meals provides that sense of being cared for mm -hmm. because someone's preparing a really beautiful meal for them, which, yeah. you know, the connection piece is huge with food. It's not just about nutrition. It's a large impact how we're connecting and that yeah. goes for kind of on, on the ground here within our volunteers and yeah. the connections that are happening there. And then within the community through our agencies. And then the other channel that our food goes is our open to public at the end of the week. So agencies come in at their convenience through the week as we're getting food every day and they know our schedule and some of them come like Selkirk High School comes almost every day during the week to get food for their meal programs. Yeah. Um, they'll, yeah, they'll come multiple times or however many times they need for clients. And then Friday, we don't want the food rotting in the fridge over the weekend. And so we open it up and any, not, any perishables that won't last the weekend are offered up to the community. And that's everyone welcome and we get all walks and of you life can see that on social media, um, mm. the conversations and pictures and that kind of like the door is open mm -hmm. presence in the community. And and so when when members come in, whether organizations or members of the community come in for use, um, what articles of food do they find? Depends on the week and what we get. It's yeah. kind of like Christmas around here. That's like <laughs> the exciting piece of it. We, well, we saw we you know, open what we up get the boxes and everyone really was like, cupcakes, broccoli, we got some pasta yeah. surprises. Some moldy berries <laughs> and like perfect grapes. Yeah. It, every day is totally different and every week's different. So some weeks, I mean, the idea of the open to public is that it is the excess after we're directing as much food as we can to vulnerable community members. And the people that come for open to public, it's it's very non-stigmatized access because it's it doesn't matter the reason you're coming. You're coming to save food waste. You're coming to just check it out and yeah. see if there's something new to try, or it's really substantially helping your budget. Like it's a it's a big range of people that come through. Without a doubt, I think that I'm I'm really happy that we're here today to talk and to talk to the community about the resource because as a member looking in. I didn't know that you supported so many organizations behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So that's really interesting to know. Um, volunteering, how um, how does someone get involved if they if they want to help? You just reach out to us, <laughs> shoot us an email, or give us a call. And our contact info is on our website or on social media. We have our Healthy Kimberly Food Recovery Depot group and Instagram, we're Food Recovery Depot. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I have to from myself, but also, honestly, from your team, I have no doubt. Uh, and everyone that's really enjoyed watching your growth, um, I have to say thank you uh, to them as well, to that supportive, mm -hmm. amazing team. It's, it's quite a, an interesting thing to see like an ember of a good idea grow and then impact mm -hmm. so many. And coming back, you mentioned the high school piece or just one of the organizations that pick up, but it's gotta be, and I'll use that word again, enriching for when you're just like, you're cutting up the vegetables to, to make the meal, but then knowing that the kid that didn't eat or that didn't have anything in the fridge that morning is, is where the end result happens and you're not seeing it, but you know it's there. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, I, I think that it makes our community that much better to have you here. Well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks. There's so many people that make it happen, like you said. Of course. And it's so, uh, it, it really is um, almost as much about community building as it is about the food and the food security because food does bring, bring people together and building those connections stronger, whether it's between community groups and agencies or volunteers or donors, food donors all of those relationships getting stronger just means that there are those support systems built in our community and less people are feeling hungry and more people are feeling loved. And mm -hmm. yeah, that's kind of at the root of what we're doing is just <laughs> building those community ties stronger so that we are a more resilient community and, and everyone is feeling the love a little more. Yes, yeah. we gotta, we gotta feel that to really be living. Without a doubt. Mm -hmm. So um, just to speak out to the community, uh, I guess we encourage everyone to get involved, whether it's the Kimberly, um, Healthy Kimberly Food Depot or Cranbrook or anything in your hometown and surrounding area. It's just at, at a core component of a community, it's an essential piece. Yeah, excellent. Mm -hmm. Thank you again. Thank you so much. <laughs> 
thanks to Shannon Gray Duncan and her entire team here at Healthy Kimberly. Showcasing a healthy community is what we love doing here at Dolly & Associates and that's what we've done today. See you next time.